the FDMG renovations. I can't believe I survived that right. because that was a hell of an emotional and psychological roller coaster to be on when you think we about to finish the renovations and the guy ran off with the money and he ain't coming back. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I can't believe I survived that. But what got me through it was knowing my purpose. Right. How do we make black independence realistic and normal to our black children, especially our black boys? Seeing is believable. Mm -hmm. And without the example, there would be no, repli no replication. Mm -hmm. You see, the reason why they want to be athletes and entertainers, that's all they see. All the black professional men have abandoned the inner city for a life in a white suburb. You understand? Mm -hmm. Some of them have moved to a black suburb. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The children who are the most vulnerable, those are the impoverished black boys. Those middle class people are not coming back to save them, although they may come back to hustle them if they can get some grant money for it. You understand? Mm -hmm. But true service that's given from the heart, you don't see a lot of that going from black boys to black men. Excuse me, from black men to black boys right. or from black women to black girls. We have lost the spirit of service and charity mm -hmm. in the black community. We've lost it. When you go back in our history, we come from a tradition of self help societies. Right. We have black self-help societies all over the country, all over the world. That's how we got buried. That's how the babies were born. That's where the life insurance came from. That's where the uh, community defense came from. Service organizations. We don't have service organizations. You got intellectual masturbation camps and religious cliques disguised as service organizations, right. but they take more than they give. I got you. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to black relationships again, you'll see a lot of uh, you'll see a lot of couple right now it's a thing, you see a lot of couples championing couples therapy and things like that. But I've noticed it's a lot of people who put the relationship before themselves. Like they've they've let the relationship define who they are. Do you feel like individual therapy should Pre should come before couples therapy. Do you feel yes. like we're yes. couples? Because a lot of what we call relationship problems are really individual pathologies and traumas that are spilling over into the relationship. Mm -hmm. If I was an unhappy person before I started the relationship with that sister, this is not a relationship problem. It's me. You understand? If she was an alcoholic before we dated or a weed head or she had low self-esteem or parental abandonment issues before we met, that's a her problem, not a we. Yeah. So treating the system when the problem is really with a component of the system is a waste of time. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a firm proponent that if y'all got issues communicating with each other, you can still have your couples therapy, mm -hmm. but both of y'all still need to have individual therapy as well right. to deal with them issues that's feeding into the relationship. You know, the irony of romance is that the people who seek it the most are the ones who are least ready for it. Mm -hmm. And also the people who need the most help are the first ones looking for a relationship because it becomes a distraction from working on the self. Right. A relationship for an unhealthy person is a distraction from focusing on self. And right. that's why a lot of people have to end relationships when they're dealing with people who are less than their best because you often find that the person you're dating who is less than their best don't want to become the best version of themselves. You understand me? Right. Me being in this relationship with you is for you to co-sign this. This is supposed to be a codependency. I wasn't looking for growth. I wasn't looking for you to make the best version of who I am. I was simply wanting you to validate this. Mm -hmm. You understand? So oftentimes when you're in a relationship with a dysfunctional person, you have to leave it because you realize they just wanted a codependency. Right. They wanted you to co-sign the alcoholism. Yeah. Give them excuses for continuance. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Give them excuses for continuing. If you're somebody about becoming your best person, you better make sure the person you settle them down with is also interested in being the best versions of themselves because somebody trying to be God and somebody content with being the devil cannot coexist in the same space and time. That's a fact. I look at you, Dr. Umar, and I look at the strides you made and just the vision and purpose that you have for our people. You ain't seen that in a long time. How do we protect you, Dr. Umar? Uh, I mean, I have my security, you know, wherever I go, I have security there. Outside of that, I like to travel solo often, mm -hmm. you know, because once you are seen with security every second of your life, you look vulnerable when you don't have it. I so you. I never want to lose that safety of being able to walk through the streets alone and people not feel like I'm at risk uh, for danger because they used to seeing me with 10, 20 people. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Right. So I never want to lose that ability to just be a regular brother, you see. Right. Uh, um, and also we got to keep in mind that 
most of our great men who were assassinated, they were assassinated either by or with the help of the members of the inner circle of their security team. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you also got to be careful True. of that, you know, from Malcolm to Jesse, especially when you go to Africa, you know, from Lumumba, Amakal Cabral, Walter Rodney, there were people they knew mm -hmm. who participated in those. Fred Hampton, mm -hmm. whose chief of security drugged his Kool-Aid, he slept through his own assassination, yeah. you know, and we are less loyal now than we were then. Fact. You understand? So if they do that to them, imagine what they'd do to me. You know, so you have to be careful, man, because it's a, it's a, this struggle is a lonely struggle. Garvey spoke to that, most of our leaders spoke to that, so I benefited from it. Uh, from all those lessons, I experienced a lot of what they had to say. And it's a very lonely struggle, even when you got a lot of people around you, because the people around you, a lot of times their agenda is not your best interest, nor is it the agenda you're living and dying for. Right. You know, they always have something personal they're trying to push, a relationship, or they want to build their social media, they want to get their business off the ground through you. You understand, which is fine if it comes as a consequence of you being focused on the goal. But a lot of time, they're not even focused on the goal. They're just focused on getting their agendas met. Right. So even when you're surrounded by people, you can still be lonely because you look around and you say, how many people are really here for why I'm here? You mm -hmm. see, and if I died today or tomorrow, how many of these people would pick up this torch and keep right. on pushing? Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very lonely struggle. I always say, you know, uh, two things. One, if I had a half dozen, I don't even need 12 like Christ, give me six. Mm -hmm. If I had a half dozen men and women that I could absolutely trust with anything, I would have gotten so much more done than now. Right. You can only give people but so much because you can't entrust them with too much because if they flip on you, now they have the you. information. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's a very neurotic e existence. You know, the Honorable Marcus Garvey said, when I meet somebody who's good, I got to try to get as much out of them as I can mm -hmm. before they flip on me. And it's a right. shame. Right. You know, I met an attorney one time that says whenever she does contracts for uh, black musicians, rap groups, singing groups, bands, she always does a separation clause, even if they don't ask for it. Mm -hmm. She says, if we don't do a separation clause, I can't represent you. Right. I said, why? She said, because with, unfortunately with black people, it's not a question of if they're going to break up. It's when. Right. This is what she said. Yeah, she said, true. I'm not doing, I'm, I will not represent a, a group of uh -huh. blacks, business or entertainment, if we don't have a separation clause. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how good friends they are, ego or money is going to split them, you mm -hmm. see? And so when I'm working with people, I got to keep in my mind that one day, he may be my worst enemy. Mm -hmm. So I can't give him the whole plan. I can't give him everything. And it's a shame because sometimes you want to lay your load on somebody else's shoulder to ease your burden. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, right. you see? But unfortunately, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. But you are sustained in this work, as I think the ancestors were, by the fact that you know that you were born to do it. That's my sustaining Premise. You understand? Right. When things are tough, when I'm depressed, when I'm struggling, the FDMG renovations, I can't believe I survived that. Right. Because that was a hell of an emotional and psychological roller coaster to be on when you think we're about to finish the renovations and the guy ran off with the money and he ain't coming back. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I can't believe I survived that. But what got me through it was knowing my purpose. Right. And even as a therapist, one of the things I tell most of the clients is, we gotta find out what your purpose is. Because if you have a reason for being, and if you have the reason for living, and if you have a reason for putting up with that hell, if your life has meaning, if you know the whys of what you're doing, mm -hmm. you can put up with almost any detraction. Mm -hmm. And that's what carried me through, is I, I literally believe I was born to do the work that I'm doing. That's powerful. And you know, I, I appreciate that last part because Again, we have to put that type of information, or put that type of motivation in our children, getting them to believe the why. Uh, Dr. Umar, Dr. Umar, it's been a pleasure. Yes, sir. Uh, if you would, for those who don't know, if you would yes. let people know how to, you still taking donations. Oh, right? absolutely. Okay. We gotta fund the operations. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, please support the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Hit your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. That's cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. Hit your PayPal for my international Africans in particular, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. So again, it's FDMG school on the cash app, FDMG Academy on the PayPal. And if you want to mail in your donation, P.O. Box 9634 Wilmington, Delaware, P.O. Box 9634 Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. You can also go to drumarjohnson.com, D R U M A R J O H N S O N. Dot com and you can click directly on the links to make your donation. You can also click directly on my social media. Unfortunately, 
these Negroes and ninjas have created so many fraudulent cash apps, so many fraudulent PayPal's, so many fraudulent Instagram, so many fraudulent Facebooks and uh, Twitters that it's best to go to my website and click the correct link from there. Peace and Pan-Africanism. For my black fathers in the room, I understand you might be addicted to sports. I understand that you wanted to go to the NFL and you might not have made it. And now you want to live vicariously through your son. There's nothing more selfish than a black father to impose his athletic dreams on his son's ego. If that boy don't want to be a football player, there's nothing wrong with that. If he don't want to be a basketball player, there's nothing wrong with that. You had your life. Let your son live his. Because after all, the only people benefiting from black men going to the NFL are poor white women.